Good evening, this is Eswatini TV News Bulletin at 8, read to you by Nautilus Itole. First up, let's have a look at tonight's headlines. The weeding of rail fields has started. The Ministry of Health is urging the nation to adhere to all COVID-19 regulations. The Ministry of Health plans to construct a temporary COVID-19 structure in Manzini. Apologies for that technical glitch. For now, here are the news in detail. His Majesty King Imsat III has commanded regiments to adhere to all COVID-19 protocols during the course of the weeding of the rail fields which commenced at Sisabela Royal Field. In response to His Majesty's command, the regiments ensured that all protocols were respected on the first day of the royal assignment. <laughs> Warriors showed a high level of compliance with COVID-19 protocols during the weeding of royal fields which was commanded by His Majesty King Mswati III. The weeding of the royal fields, which is the pride and joy of every traditional warrior, commenced on a high note at Asisabeni, proving to be a colorful affair amid challenging times. The first day of weeding is known as Ubungula. A number of adjustments were made on the first day of the annual royal assignment where regiments proudly proved their loyalty for king and country. With the COVID-19 pandemic still weighing heavily on the shoulders of the nation, the warriors had their hands sanitized and weeded with their face masks on while maintaining physical distancing. His Majesty King Mswati III has commanded the strongest possible adherence to all COVID-19 protocols during the course of the weeding. Ingwala yeshugile lo nyaga ngezizatsa le COVID. La Sinabotorotela, Basikronga song as in his participator, or La Sibenda, Sibam Bissel and Rosilla, Senga Botorotela. The full social distance, the checker, Konga Squenda was Wenda Rathe, Meglanzela Umceto, we COVID, Umceto, we live, Umceto, one tap tangle. Nango Ramacha Kong, Social distance in Nenga Kurumacha Hen Kong Sasam Belagal, Jongas Kali, and Alok Klagul. The seven is alum set of lands alum set of a torotel and Joven Guenyama is in La Lille. There's a bonga with Jemacha and Guenyama and Emacha Hen. Emacha, Aposa of Fela Lemaca, Emacha, a testy lenyalo. Serata at the Simos or Sinjan. Nago the Wongo moon to roll swati. We are Kutsa to a woods. I got it all a coffee to Sunayo in. A full social distance. Sifonio, the Salamatulu, Wembumulo. Wongo moon at our ambem cuts in a band. Mclava Wonga. Sifonio, a Salamatul Wembumulo, Uvigale a coffee. From Esislabeni, the warriors proceeded to Lutitini Royal Residence, where they joined a to His Majesty in dancing, which took place inside the Kettle Bayer. On the news, I'm Sandy Lamakanya reporting with Temba Mamba at Lutitini Royal Residence. The Director of Health Services, Dr. Vusi Makakula, is urging the nation to adhere to the COVID-19 preventative measures so that the country can contain the spread of COVID-19. Makakula says currently the health sector is struggling with the surge in infections. 
The Ministry of Health in the Kingdom is worried about the increasing numbers of COVID-19 infections and the number of COVID fatalities. According to the Director of Health Services, Dr. Vusi Makakula, there isn't much that the Ministry can do to lower or prevent the rise of new infections except to continue urging the nation to adhere to the laid down COVID-19 prevention measures. <laughs> And you number of So, we need to see As a ministry, we are getting worried about the new infections and fatalities that we record daily. Unfortunately, without the participation of the public and their willingness to wear masks, sanitize, and social distance, the new infections cannot be controlled. Our facilities are full and we are worried that who is going to help Maswati when even the health workers get infected. That is why we urge the nation to stick to the prevention measures that have been provided. On Monday, the Kingdom recorded 195 new infections of COVID-19 and 13 fatalities. For Swatini TV News, I'm Temalanga in Lamini with Muslim Konda in Babane. The Ministry of Health is in a process of constructing another temporary structure in Manzini, which will be similar to the one at Malakwane, which currently assists COVID-19 patients. This was confirmed by the Deputy Director of Health Services, Dr. Velepi Okelo. The Ministry of Health has been encouraging Maswati, who have tested positive for COVID-19, to wait for the COVID team to contact them for treatment. But if they feel further symptoms while awaiting, if they can, they can come over to Malakwane, where they can be assisted. Members of the public seem to be making use of the facility, where on Monday alone about 85 people were attended to. The Deputy Director of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Vele Piokelo, gives us an insight of how the temporal facility operates. These are people who have been confirmed but they have not been assisted because there have been some delays with our, our home care doctors who are also facing a high number of cases that are being confirmed currently. So we are saying to the people who, who know that they have, been, they have been told they are positive that they should uh, go to that facility to get assistance. At that facility, they will find uh, health workers, there will be a doctor who will uh, do uh, services, who will offer services that include checking for your uh, blood sugar, they also check for your uh, uh, blood pressure, they also check for your oxygen saturation in the lungs, so that when they find there's a problem with any of these three, which we have seen are the most problematic with the COVID-19 patients, then they will recommend that either you are evacuated uh, to the, the facility like Mavuso or Lubombo, or you are treated uh, almost immediately right there. We've heard rumors that such a facility is being set up in Manzini. These rumors have been confirmed true by the Minister of Health. So we do uh, want also to set up a similar structure in Manzini, with the Manzini city. For Swatini TV News, I'm Kian MCB with Muslim Konda Babane. Students from the CIT college have raised concerns over the decision that has been taken by the college that they should provide COVID-19 certificates before they can be allowed in class. The students are saying the tests are expensive, hence some of them cannot afford. CIT college students in Babani are fuming and have expressed their concerns over a notice which forces them to undergo the COVID-19 testing and produce results and only those with negative results of the disease will be allowed in class. The students say they cannot afford the fees for testing for COVID-19. We spoke telephonically with the principal, Dr. Mbongenika who says this is for everyone's good and for their own benefit as well. He says even the staff have been required to undergo the test and some have already tested positive. <laughs> He says this is for a good cause. They can not appreciate it now, but they will later, and no one is forced to do those tests in those expensive laboratories. The principal secretary in the Ministry of Education, Petram Stewart, says he can say nothing much on this matter because the decision might have been triggered by the threat being caused by the pandemic in the school. The regulations under the education states that Every school must have facilities for washing hands and students must be checked for temperature before entering the school premises each day and they are required to fully wear their face masks. A school must also have an isolation room for those pupils who might not feel well and also have symptoms for COVID-19. 
for Swatini TV News, I'm Kian MCB with Tim because Marvin Bella is Twashini. A long-standing family feud has seen a 20-year-old man being accused of raping his aunt. The accused, whose name will not be revealed to protect the identity of the alleged survivor, says he did not commit the purported crime, but this is a result of a family dispute. The accused wants the court to grant him bail. The 20-year-old accused faces a charge of rape under the Sexual Offences and Domestic Violence Act where he stands accused of sexually violating his 21-year-old auntie. He is alleged to have committed this crime on 30 November 2019. His charge sheet states that he did not use a condom when committing the alleged offence and also broke the element of trust amongst relatives. The accused told the court that he was arrested on the 2nd of this month while preparing to leave for work on the following day. He says he was to return to work on the 4th of January at North End Platinum Mine in South Africa. The accused says he will plead not guilty to the charge. He says the charges emanate from a family dispute involving his two grandfathers. The accused has narrated that his grandfather worked at North End Platinum Mine. When he retired, he was asked to recommend someone to take over his position at the mine. The accused says a family meeting was held and it was suggested that one of his other grandfather's children should take over the position. However, his grandmother recommended that the accused, in light of that he is an orphan, should take the position. The accused says this caused tension amongst the family which resulted in threats of violence and the family being divided into two camps. He has told the court that in December 2019 he received a call from one of his aunts who informed him of the rape allegations against him. The accused told the court that his aunt coerced him to admit same so that they could deal with the matter, failing which they would inform his employer at the mine and he would lose his job. He says this matter is urgent because he had to return to work on the 4th of January and his continued incarceration might lead to him losing his job. The accused is represented by Sandy Lesenzo Shabangu of N.E. Kininza Atenis. accused persons have denied being involved in the Stearns robbery which happened last month. The accused faced five counts of robbery where they allegedly stole items worth over 462,000 emalangeni in different areas. Therefore, they have since applied for bait. The two accused are charged with robbery where they are alleged to have stolen items worth over 462,000 emalangeni, which include mobile phones, jewelry and money in October and December last year. They are accused of having stolen the items at Stens, Sitwashini, Nie Flas and at Muse Flats. In the bail applications, Manga Vusi Lamini and Elton Eldo Makama say they will plead not guilty to the charges they face. Makama says he was arrested on the 22nd of December last year by the Lukos unit. The accused says he was slept with five counts of robbery. He denies this and says the stolen items were never found in his possession. Makama also says none of the stolen items can be attributed to him or his co-accused. He says he believes police might have been given false information or are on a fishing expedition to identify the perpetrators. Makama says the court should take note of the fact that he had not been charged with the contravention of the Firearms and Ammunitions Act. He says this is despite allegations that a firearm was used in the commission of the offences. Makama alleged that a phone similar to one belonging to the complainants in the count was found in one Mzwandi Lekamets' possession, but he was released for reasons best known to the law enforcement agents. The 18-year-old Makama says he is still young and still wants to further his studies for a brighter future. He also says he fears contracting the deadly COVID-19 at the Sitvashini Correctional Facility, which he says is overcrowded. He says he has lost weight considerably. 
His mental condition has deteriorated as well. He attributes this to his continued incarceration. The matter is expected to be before Judge Titus Mlangeni tomorrow. The accused are represented by Linda Lamini. For Swatini TV News, Temgozima Vimbela, High Court. Scuba divers under the Royal Eswatini Police Service are pleading with Emaswati to ensure their safety when swimming in the country's rivers. Scuba divers have recorded seven corpses, or rather have recovered seven corpses of people who drowned while swimming. This past festive season recorded different incidents of drownings in the country, including both the young and the old. Police scuba divers usually rush to attend to drowning incidents. This past festive season, the scuba divers attended to about seven cases, which is a slight decrease from previous years. Dumisan Inlandla, a scuba diver, says they work well with community police who are quick to respond as well as report such cases. We received reports up of for about seven drownings and we were able to retrieve almost all the bodies. But uh, our main concern is that it seemingly the, the numbers are increasing. So we would like to urge members of the public to take away of uh, using the rivers uh, most of the time. We, we would like to, to, to make uh, members of the public, especially women who go and do their laundry in, in, in rivers, that they should make sure that they do not go alone. They, they have to go with someone who will assist them. Because normally what they do, they leave the babies under the trees while they are doing their washing. So the crocodiles are predators. They, you find that they, they, they will go and then can grab the child. So we urge them to make sure and make extra caution that they do not go there alone. He says they do have available resources to attend to this instance and they are also professionally trained to protect themselves from dangerous animals. He asks those who might have taken intoxicating substances to avoid swimming or crossing rivers, especially during the marula season where they are attempted to take a shortcut going back home after being intoxicated. He also pleads with women who usually do their laundry along river banks never to leave children unattended to because that exposes them to different accidents. For Eswatini TV News, I'm Kian Msibi with Muslim Konda Nkonini. Chief Police Communications Officer Pindile Vilagati appeals with the nation to assist in the search for two minors of Nyalnyali area. Following a report of two missing children from Nyalnyali, which is a, an area in the Shiseloni region, uh, policed by Gaponga Police Station, tomorrow we'll be doing a investigation or search for the two missing children that went missing before Christmas in 2020. So we appeal to the nation for any assistance as we conduct the operation. And if ever there is someone who's still keeping the children for any purpose, we appeal to that person to please bring back the children. They can put them it's either on a path or any busy road so that people can identify them. Whether alive or not alive, we will appreciate to get them back. And if ever someone has an information that can assist in the investigation, they can call the regional commissioner, who is Mrs. Wendy Letter, on 7606-4059, 7606-4059, or the station commander of Kaponga Police Station, Mr. Nklabat. World Vision, with support from the Global Fund, continues with the drive to reduce new HIV infections among young people. According to the communications manager, Zanele Lamini, the youth is responding well to this initiative. World Vision is working in collaboration with the Coordinating Assemble for Non-Governmental Organization through funding from Global Fund engage the youth in the country on an HIV and AIDS campaign, which aims to create more awareness to young people in the country. The World Vision Communications Officer Zanele Lavini says their main goal is to eradicate the number of young people testing positive for HIV and AIDS. Let's go and go get the cellular logo team. The band will be showing us how to get the cellular logo team. The band will be showing us how to get the cellular logo team.
She says they have engaged with the youth in 12 constituencies in the country and also visited higher institutions of learning to engage young people in matters of HIV and AIDS. Shamini says what they aim to achieve is to ensure that the youth protect themselves from acquiring the virus and encourage them to practice good lifestyle changes that will reduce and prevent further infection. With the campaign, the organization were also able to support 501 young girls in bringing them back to school after they were disturbed by early pregnancies. For Swatini TV News, I'm Demalang and Lamini Muslim Konda Ezulini. In our international news, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, has imposed a nationwide lockdown in the country following a surge of COVID-19 cases. Here's a report. With most of the country already under extreme measures, it's clear that we need to do more together to bring this new variant under control while our vaccines are rolled out. In England, we must therefore go into a national lockdown which is tough enough to contain this variant. That means the government is once again instructing you to stay at home. You may only leave home for limited reasons permitted in law, such as to shop for essentials, to work if you absolutely cannot work from home, to exercise, to seek medical assistance, such as getting a COVID test, or to escape domestic abuse. Very good evening. You're still watching Eswatini TV News Bulletin at 8. Now we'll have a look at our international sports news. Following Chelsea's loss to Manchester City this past weekend, the coach Frank Lombard now faces being axed and shown the exit door. According to BBC, the coach received enormous support from the team's boss, Roman Ibrahim, Ibrahimovic, where he was expected to play his role and deliver good results. Things are getting tougher by the day for Chelsea FC coach in England, Frank Lampard, following another loss for his team this past weekend, where his team lost 3-1 to Manchester City. This recent loss means that Chelsea has managed to win only one game in six matches in a row. Football analysts in England say this past weekend's loss means that Chelsea can now kiss the English Premier League Cup goodbye. The analysts say this puts Lampard in an awkward position despite the team's boss Roman Abrahimovic spending about 300 million US dollars buying new players to improve the team's performance and also lifting the English Premier League title as one of the biggest clubs in England. Currently, Chelsea is at position 9 in the EPL standings. And from South Africa, Cricket South Africa has reached a decision that all cricket matches be played in one stadium to curb the spread of COVID-19. The six teams playing cricket games in the Cricket Premier League will be housed in Pochefstrom together. The teams will be separated into two teams where they will play 15 games starting on the 18th this month. Reporting for Swatini TV News, I am Kian MCB. Visuals from VOA, France 24 and DW. And that's all for the evening. Before we conclude, let's have a relook at our top stories. The weeding of rail fields has started. The Ministry of Health is urging the nation to adhere to all COVID-19 regulations. The Ministry of Health plans to construct a temporary COVID-19 structure in Manzini. And with that, we sum up our bulletin. Up next is the weather update from myself and the team here at Swatini TV. Thank you for watching. Good night.